Hello, I'm David. I'm currently an F2 doctor in London, and today we're going to be trying out some software that our trust has given us access to. It's called the Oxford Medical Simulation Program, and it's virtual reality, so you can actually use the Oculus Rift headsets. But for those of us who don't fancy shelling out £300 for one of these things like me, it actually works perfectly well on a normal computer monitor. So I honestly think this is the future of medical training and I'm very excited about this. And what I'm going to try doing today on one of the scenarios is speed running it because with the gamification of medicine, I also think so should come the speed running of medicine. Uh, unless you're sacrificing the quality of your work, in which case, no. But for simulation training, why not? So let's open this thing up. Hello, doctor. I'm really worried about this new so the way patient, this works is, Ray, this is the a 42-year-old man here. who's come in I'm, feeling the white generally dot is the unwell. Cursor. I've not fully point. assessed him yet, but point he seems click. pretty sick. Can you come and see him, please? Yeah, sure. Let's see him. Hello, Ray. I'm your doctor. So what brought hands. you in today? I can't yet. Hello, doctor. Thank you for seeing me. I just feel awful. I really hope you can tell me what's wrong with me. Yeah, sure. Right. So, let's... Get a presenting. Let's provide reassurance. I'd like to have a chat with you about how you've been feeling, and then we'll, and then we'll do some tests to find out what's going on. Do everything we want. You've done so the right thing by coming to see us today. Him, Can you tell me about what's history, brought you in today? Medication. I've been feeling under the weather for a couple allergies. of weeks, Doctor. Can you give me a bit of background as to what's brought you in? It all started about two weeks ago. Two weeks. I started feeling much more tired generally. I was struggling to get up and going each day. Have you been experiencing any other symptoms in the last Staying few on the weeks? My appetite has been really low and over the past few days I've felt as though I could be sick. Okay, Yesterday so I started fatigue, really sore muscles vomiting. and stomach pain. And I actually You're vomited so a few times so my wife thought I should get seen. You also want system review, gastrointestinal... That's right? the monitoring in place. And aside from the issues you've mentioned, do you have okay, any other medical fine. problems? So we'll come to that. I've had thyroid problems for a long time. Well, let's ask well, since starting tablets, things have been regular. okay. My GP did some thyroid oh, tests last week and he was happy with the results. Okay, so he's got a high thyroid treatment for taking, it. Please. So that's unlikely to yeah, be. Yeah, I take the occasional paracetamol for aches and pains. And I take a tablet for my thyroid, but I can't remember what it's called. We'll save us time later. Does the tablet name Levothyroxine sound BBG familiar? And, and if so, do you take it every day? Oh yes, that's what it's called. Yes. Okay, so I he's on and he's taking the right dose. Are you allergic to anything? Not that I know. In of. any case, hypothyroidism won't cause Do you smoke? Vomiting, so not interested really. No, Doesn't I haven't smoke. ever smoked. I like going to the gym and keeping fit. Do you drink any alcohol? I drink the occasional pint of ale, okay, but I so really overdo it. Nothing spectacular. Any vomiting? Difficulty swallowing? Heartburn, stomach pain or diarrhea. So we've got a phone there, we've washed our hands. My bowel movements have been fine. So let's examine them. So we're going to do an ATV examination because it's in the key and scenario. So we're going to start yesterday. by assessing the airway. I vomited food I'd eaten and then saliva mostly. My so tummy's been really sore all over. Okay, so generalised. Can you tell me a bit more about the pain? That's the IV access in place. Thanks. That's done. All the relevant tests are ordered. I'll get them processed right away. That's the blood cultures taken. I'll make sure that's taken so to the blood gas machine right away. very important in real life as well. Yes, so doing the that. pain is achy. It comes and goes and it's all over my stomach. Okay, fine. So we're going to assess the airway. In real life, I wouldn't shine a light in his airway because he's speaking. So we know his airway is patent, but we're doing this just for points in the simulation. Airway patent, no strider. Okay, the next Doctor, thing... Doctor, the VBG results are back. They're fine. on the desk. We'll have a look at the VBG results soon, but first we're going to auscultate his chest. And then we're going to have a look at the respiratory rate in SATs. And his SATs are low. No, sorry, they're normal. Oh no, they're below 94 now. Just listening. And it sounds the same on both sides. Okay, fine. But his SATs went below 90, yeah, 93. So remember, 94 to 8 is what we're aiming because he's got no, not really any medical history. And this is an acute scenario, so we're going to start with 15 litres non rebreathe. The nurse will pop that on for us. Then we're going to move on to C, uh, circulation. So we're going to measure the cap refill time. 
and this is basically pressing on his fingernail and seeing how long it takes to reflush should be less than two seconds. Cap refill time is three seconds. Okay, so he's a bit peripherally shot down. And then we're going to auscultate heart sounds. I'm not going to bother taking his pulse because we'll hear whether it's regular here. And I know he's tachycardic here. That is too high. His blood pressure is also low. Uh, those heart sounds were normal. So we're going to, his blood pressure is low enough that I'm going to stick him with some fluid. So I'm going to do 500 mil bolus of saline. If he had heart failure or was elderly, I running. might consider I'll halving that. when that bag's finished. But we're going to give him a bolus and hopefully that should make the blood pressure go up and the heart rate go down. Okay, and then last thing in C, I'm going to check his hydration status. Now in real life, I'd also check the calves, but uh, there's not really any reason to think that yet because he's got abdo pain. So, I mean, there's not really any reason All to suspect there might be any problem All membranes are dry, dentition in good condition, no central cyanosis. Okay, so he's got dry mucous membranes. Um, that's actually not a great marker because he's on oxygen and it can dry him out, and, but if he wasn't on oxygen, he probably is just dry. So now we're going to check his pupils and we're going to get a blood glucose because this is under D for disability, which is the neurological stuff. Pupils equal and reactive to light. Okay. No scleral icterus. There's not really any reason to do a full neurological exam yet. Let's see what the glucose shows. Capillary blood glucose is 27 millimoles okay. per liter, doctor. Uh, and that is That's way too much. Is very so high. we're going to check for ketones just in case he's got. Uh... So we're going to. That's urine the urine dip, dip done. Um, it's positive for ketones and glucose. You okay. can see the results on the computer. And then we're going to do a blood ketones. Although this guy, we now fairly sure has diabetic ketoacidosis. What are the blood ketones? We're going to examine that bag of fluid has finished, Doctor. Okay, we're going to examine his abdomen as well. Just because he's got Blood ketones pain. are 5.5 millimoles per litre. Ooh, that is That's very high. That's registering as high. Okay, so above three is ketoacidosis. So let's feel his abdomen. And as part of E for exposure, as well as the abdomen exam, uh, we're also going to examine his skin soon. And we're checking his temperature. So he's afebrile. So I don't think he's infected. Um, but you can see the fluids are working now because his blood pressure's gone up. His heart rate's gone down a bit. And is this a surgical problem is what I want to know. Is the abdomen soft? If it is, then we're not worried about surgery. Abdomen problem. soft and generally tender, but there's no guarding, no masses, and okay. no organomegaly. Fine, so this is DKA. We're going to treat it. And as good doctors, we're going to look at the guidelines, even though I'm not going to spend too long because I know them. So we're just going to give uh, a, a litre of saline which would normally go over an hour, but here Most it's that in the simulation. And then we're going to go I'll medications, you know uh, endocrine, diabetes, and we're going to go fixed rate insulin 0.1 units per kilogram That's per hour as per the guideline. And then we're going to update the patient. Oops, oh, sorry, we forgot to do the skin exam. I've Let's already do that. completed a full skin exam and there was nothing abnormal to find. Okay, and then we are going to update the patient. Let me update you on what's going on at the moment. And we're going to Thanks for that. update on I feel better knowing what's going on. Let me update you on where we are clinically at everyone moment. updated. And then okay. because Thanks we're going to stuff him with loads of fluids, we now need to stick in a catheter so that we can order your output monitoring, to be honest. Let's just do that. No problem. I'll start strict fluid okay. monitoring. Right, so we've started that. Let's just have a look at the VBG. Yep, yeah, glucose, lactate high, uh, sodium, potassium. Potassium's high, so we're not going to give him any extra potassium yet. Um, and he's acidotic. So below 7.2 uh, confirms diabetic ketoacidosis. And we're just going to have a quick look at his medical records, medical history. No known uh, diabetes and his uh, medications. Okay, so this this is a weird case. Now we're going to phone a senior. Um, you sound like you've got this under control. I'll come to review the patient as soon as I can. Keep a close eye on him. And yep. make sure we've ruled out an underlying infection. Okay. I would repeat a gas soon to see if his pH improves. Okay. So let's do that VBG. In terms of fluid, give him another bolus, and if his potassium is under 5.5, hang some maintenance fluid with potassium as well. Well okay. done. If you're happy he is stable and everything is done, you can move on to your next patient. 
And so we're just, while we're waiting for the VG, let's speak to the diabetes team. late onset presentation of type 1 diabetes. Your results, it sounds you're like you've infection. managed him appropriately. Once he's stable yeah, yeah, in general X-ray, medicine, like the diabetes infection. team will take oh, over his long-term care and stabilise his insulin regimen. Thanks for letting me know about this patient. That bag of fluid has finished, Doctor. I'll make sure that's taken to the blood gas machine right away. We'll get that done now. Okay, and white cell count's fine, and uh, trop, trop D diamond fine, lactate stye. Yeah, yeah, so looking at all these confirms this is a, DK, a new DKA, probably a new diagnosis of type 1 diabetes, which is atypical for his age, really. Uh, still waiting for the VBG to come back, which will show us what uh, fluids to give him. We've spoken to the diabetes team. Doctor, the VBG results are back. Oh, They're are. on the desk. Oh, VBG 2. And his potassium is 4.3, his pH is coming up, his lactate's gone down, his glucose has come down. So we're winning, we're fixing him. So we're going to give him another bag of fluids now, which I happen to know will be over two hours, which means we're going to give him 20 millimoles of potassium, because that's the highest we can give. X-ray's ready on the computer, Doctor. It's only two hourly. Those fluids are so up and that. running. So I'll let's let just have a quick look at the chest finished. X-ray. Uh, and it's completely clear, so it's not an infection. This is just a new diagnosis of type 1 diabetes. So let's leave. Complete questions before leaving. Uh, acute onset. Uh, he's going to be on, need to be on insulin for the rest of his. Oh, come on. Insulin and lifelong. And Response now we can get out. So that completes the scenario. So now, the nice thing about these things is that you have a self reflection. And it doesn't actually ask you to type in anything rather pleasingly. It just asks you questions. How did that feel? So I felt I had that under control. Um, I didn't feel stressed at any point, knew what I was doing. Talk about three things that went well. Uh, so this is a very common uh, way of reflecting. You do the things that went well and the things that could be improved. And then you ask the person watching to, to do that as well for you. So three things that went well. So we recognized the problem. We did a systematic A to E assessment. Remember that if you do a systematic assessment, you're not going to miss things. Um, we treated the patient we, according to the guideline. So remember, never be afraid of just picking up guidelines because it's better to be right than to be wrong and have to look at guidelines quite simply. So talk about three things that didn't go so well. Well, for a speed run, I think I could have been probably faster, but I guess I was trying to explain things to you as well. So we had that to deal with. What specific actions could be taken to improve your future practice? Well, we'll talk about that soon. So now it should exit the program. Right, so once you've closed the program, it takes you to this page, which is the summary, and then there's feedback down below. So, new diagnosis of type 1 diabetes with ketoacidosis. So, we got it spot on. Now, just a quick summary of what that means for the non-medical types that might be watching. Type 1 diabetes is essentially an inability to produce insulin, which is a hormone that tells your body's cells to take in glucose. If it goes untreated, this results in diabetic ketoacidosis, which is an emergency. And what happens is that the glucose doesn't get taken up by your cells, so it hangs around in the blood, and you get very syrupy blood, you get dehydrated, you urinate it out, and you get even more dehydrated. And then because your cells aren't taking up glucose, your body goes into a state of starvation and starts burning away all its fats really quickly to try and get some energy. When you burn fat really quickly, uh, you produce ketone bodies, which can be used for energy, but they're really acidic and your blood gets really acidic, hence ketoacidosis, acidic blood because of the ketones. Acidosis has a lot of knock-on effects and is as bad for you as it sounds. So diabetic ketoacidosis is an emergency and the main stay of treatment is, number one, get in that fluid. That's the first priority. Second, get in the insulin. And the third, correct the potassium. Because what I was doing there is, I know that insulin is going to reduce the potassium. So I need to keep adding potassium so that there's no net decrease. And those are the three main things you do in diabetic ketoacidosis. And you do it according to your trust's guideline, otherwise you're going to get in trouble. So let's have a look. Clinical findings. Yep, as we saw. Uh, I didn't really talk about the AKI, but I did see it when I saw the bloods. The, the kidneys were actually fine, to be honest. We did the A2E assessment, as I talked about. We got a history. We did bloods, ketones, uh, and glucose. We gave oxygen fluids. We gave the treatment for DKA as per the guidelines. 
and we reassured the patient and uh, told everyone we needed to tell. So learning objectives, yep. Notice this development is sponsored by Novo Nordisk. You might recognize that company's name because they're responsible for creating Nova Rapid, which is an insulin. So little wonder that they've taken part in creating this diabetes scenario. Now, here we are. So it tells you what you did and it tells you at what time in the simulation time it did. I'm not actually sure how simulation time co corresponds to real time, but let's just get on with it. So yep, 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 yep. We did all of this. Yep, yep. And then, oh yeah, insulin, skin exam, updated people, phone seniors, we gave credit. What could we improve on? Well, it turns out nothing because we got 100%. So we are that good. And we did it in 10 minutes, 27 seconds. And then there's a bit for writing reflective practice, which you can share with whoever reviews this. I am not going to do that. And then you just save the reflection. So that was pretty good. So how would I feel about doing more of these scenarios? Well, uh, I really enjoyed it. It's good fun. Uh, and it allows you some independence in a scenario that's importantly repeatable for whoever does it. Whoever does it, whatever they do, they're going to get the same information, the same response from all the people in the scenario. And it's very objective as a result. So it might be useful for assessing doctors or even medical students. I think that this would be good for fourth or final year medical students, actually. So what I didn't I like about this simulation programme? Well, conventionally, simulations are not really to teach you about the medical aspects. As you probably realised, uh, I knew what to do from a medical point of view, and you're supposed to know what to do from a medical point of view. Uh, what simulations are really good for is training your communication skills and what are known as non-technical skills. So, you know, the communication, the prioritisation, the parallel assessments and tasks, and knowing what to do and how to deal with evolving situations and keeping your cool under pressure. I don't think this software achieves any of that, even though it does rate you for your non-technical skills. And the reason for that is because being able to click reassure patient is not quite the same thing as actually talking to a patient in real life and being able to reassure them. Updating the nurse, and updating the patient is not quite the same thing as being able to describe what diabetes is and what we're going to do about it. In fact, lots of interviews for different specialties will have you in a, in a role play with a fake patient and have you explain a diagnosis because that's actually a skill you need to practice, being able to explain particular things. And again, clicking phone senior and then having the, having the whole conversation with your senior automated, being able to hand over something with the, the correct SBAR method is a whole skill in itself, which is you're supposed to practice. And speaking to a senior, again, is a whole skill that you need to practice and which you only really get good at with experience. So having that completely automated, I think that defeats the point of a simulation in many ways. I'd say because this simulation only seems to train your medical skills, it's only really good for medical students. I don't think it is very good for doctors at all, even though this scenario was ostensibly aimed at doctors such as myself. And that's probably why I got 100% on it, because I know what to do from a medical point of view. Had I done this simulation in real life with a, a real life a mannequin and people pretending to be nurses and doctors and whatever, it might be that I'd done a lot worse. I hope not. I hope my communications and skills are good. But what I'm trying to say is you would not know that from doing this simulation. So that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're medical, I hope you enjoyed seeing what I think is the future of medical education. And if you're non-medical, I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, what our thought processes are like when we see a, a, an acutely deteriorating patient. So thank you for watching and I may or may not do more of these.